Okay, in our previous videos, we created a uh, MPH data dot rank quartile like two, and a, I even made a dot three file. And I've got on here kind of the products that we created of that. I've turned them on. So one of the videos we created quintiles that range from zero to seven, so that's eight categories. So eight quintiles, and then income five as a variable represents the five categories that were created by um, manual coding based upon um, income levels that were based on the, the federal poverty level. Now, we're gonna look at life expectancy as a function of income. Previously, you would have had a chance to play around with making scatter plots where we've got continuous variable on both the y-axis and the x-axis. And typically in health statistics, if our health variable of interest is included, we put that on the y-axis. So life expectancy is there on the y-axis. But now we've got categorical data, and there may be reasons why you'd want to look at it in a categorical way. Um, there are stronger advantages for continuous assessment, but there are situations where various categories may have something going on and it will show up better as a box plot. So under the box plot option here, I can look at our analysis variable of our 2017 life expectancy, and I can look at it by our recently created categories either of them. So I'm going to pick on the eight, you know, the eight quintiles. So it's populated this code here. All I have to do is hit the running guy and it creates our figure. And I can pan over any of these various boxes and uh, it will tell me if I remember right, it'll tell me the actual, uh, and maybe I just need to zoom in a little bit, but it should be able to tell me what these actual quintiles represent. I can also zoom out, not zoom out, but, uh, you know, right click, copy the image. If you play around with this, hover over it long enough, it will populate information. So on this particular variable, the minimum whisker is in this group. The minimum whisker is 68.14 and the maximum is 80.47. So these are the ranges of values that are, you know, not considered outliers. The interquartile range, so the upper box is the 75th, the bottom is the 25th, and this is the median. If I scroll over it and hover long enough, first quartile is uh, 72, third quartile is 75, and the median is 74. So this goes from 72.6 to 75 point something. So you can see it. We can see a lot of outliers up here in the wealthier communities in the United States. Some count, I mean, you know, so this is just making a box plot. It's pretty easy to do. There are other types of plots that are out there, but as you know, um, scatter plots and box plots and histograms seem to be some of the more common uh, plots that are out there. Uh, for research purposes. Bubble plots that you see on there are typically more associated with when you also have the ability to integrate some sort of error or, um, you know, uh, there's some different methods that you can add in there to measure the, how much error there is, which might make bubbles smaller or larger or whatever. Um, heat maps are also out there, um, you know, the, the variables though can be, you know, continuous or discrete. You can play around with those, um, but for most basic research, um, basic report writing, um, in our field, box plots, histograms, and scatter plots are most common. So I'm gonna stop it here. 
and uh, we will uh, explore some other categorical data analysis techniques uh, going forward.